This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording made by Robert Garrison. For more information on this reader, visit Climber53.com. Spirits in Bondage A Cycle of Lyrics by Clive Hamilton Introduction Published under the pseudonym Clive Hamilton, Spirits in Bondage was C.S. Lewis's first book. Released in 1919 by Heinemann, it was reprinted in 1984 by Harcourt Brace Jovanovich and included in Lewis's 1994 collected poems. It is the first of Lewis's major published works to enter the public domain in the United States. Readers should be aware that in other countries it may still be under copyright protection. Most of the poems appear to have been written between 1915 and 1918, a period during which Lewis was a student under W. T. Kirkpatrick, a military trainee at Oxford, and a soldier serving in the trenches of World War I. Their outlook varies from romantic expressions of love for the beauty and simplicity of nature to cynical statements about the presence of evil in this world. In a September 12, 1918 letter to his friend, Arthur Greaves, Lewis said that his book was mainly strung around the idea that I mentioned to you before, that nature is wholly diabolical and malevolent, and that God, if he exists, is outside of and in opposition to the cosmic arrangements. In his cynical poems, Lewis is dealing with the same questions about evil in nature that Alfred Lord Tennyson explored from a position of troubled faith in Memoriam A. H. Stanzas 54F. In a letter written perhaps to reassure his father, Lewis claimed, You know who the God I blaspheme is, and that it is not the God that you or I worship, or any other Christian. Whatever Lewis believed at that time, the attitude in many of these poems is quite different from the attitude he expressed in his many Christian books from the 1930s on. Attempts in movies and on stage plays to portray Lewis as a sheltered professor who knew little about pain until the death of his wife late in life, have to deal not only with the many tragedies he experienced from a boy on, but also with the disturbing issues he faced in many of these early poems. This book is presented in three parts. Part 1. The Prison House. Part 2. Hesitation. Part 3. The Escape. Prologue As of old Phoenician men to the Ten Isles sailing, straight against the sunset and the edges of the earth, chaunted loud above the storm and the strange seas wailing, legends of their people and the land that gave them birth, sang aloud to Baal Peor, sang unto the horn maiden, sang how they should come again with the brethren treasure laden, sang of all the pride and glory of their hardy enterprise, how they found the outer islands where the unknown stars arise. And the rowers down below, rowing hard as they could row, toiling at the stroke and feather through the wet and weary weather, even they forgot their burden in the measure of a song, and the merchants and the masters and the bondsmen all together, dreaming of the wondrous islands, brought the gallant ship along. So in mighty deeps alone, on the chainless breezes blown, in my coracle of verses I will sing of lands unknown. Flying from the scarlet city, where a lord that knows no pity mocks the broken people praying round his iron throne. Sing about the hidden country, fresh and full of quiet green, sailing over seas uncharted to a port that none has seen. Part One, The Prison House Poem One, Satan Speaks 
I am nature, the mighty mother. I am the law, ye have none other. I am the flower and the dewdrop fresh. I am the lust in your itching flesh. I am the battle's filth and strain. I am the widow's empty pain. I am the sea to smother your breath. I am the bomb, the falling death. I am the fact and the crushing reason to thwart your fantasy's newborn treason. I am the spider making her net. I am the beast with jaws blood wet. I am a wolf that follows the sun, and I will catch him ere day be done. Poem 2 French Nocturne Monchy le Preux Long leagues on either hand the trenches spread, and all is still. Now even this gross line drinks in the frosty silences divine. The pale green moon is riding overhead. The jaws of a sacked village, stark and grim, Out on the ridge have swallowed up the sun, And in one angry streak his blood has run To left and right along the horizon dim. There comes a buzzing plain, and now it seems, Flies straight into the moon, lo, where he steers, Across the pallid globe and surely nears, in that white land some harbor of dear dreams. False mocking fancy, once I too could dream, who now can only see with vulgar eye that he's no nearer to the moon than I, and she's a stone that catches the sun's beam. What call have I to dream of anything? I am a wolf, back to the world again, and speech of fellow brutes that once were men. Our throats can bark for slaughter, cannot sing. Poem 3 The Satyr When the flowery hands of spring Forth their woodland riches fling, Through the meadows, through the valleys, Goes the satyr caroling. From the mountain and the moor, Forest green and ocean shore, all the fairy kin he rallies, making music evermore. See, the shaggy pelt doth grow on his twisted shanks below, and his dreadful feet are cloven, though his brow be white as snow. Though his brow be clear and white, and beneath it fancies bright, wisdom and high thoughts are woven, and the music's of delight. Though his temples too be fair, Yet two horns are growing there, Bursting forth to part asunder All the riches of his hair. Fairy maidens he may meet, Fly the horns and cloven feet, But his sad brown eyes with wonder, Seeing, stay from their retreat. Poem 4 Victory Roland is dead, Cahulan's crest is low. The battered war rear wastes and turns to rust. And Helen's eyes and Isol's lips are dust, And dust the shoulders and the breasts of snow. The fairy people from our woods are gone. No dryads have I found in all our trees. No triton blows his horn about our seas. And Arthur sleeps far hence in Avalon. The ancient songs they wither as the grass, And waste as doth a garment waxen old. All poets have been fools who thought to mold A monument more durable than brass. For these decay, but not for that decays, The yearning high rebellious spirit of man, That never rested yet since life began, From striving with red nature and her ways. Now in the filth of war the bearsark shout, Of battle it is vexed, and yet so oft, Out of the deeps of old it rose aloft, That they who watch the ages may not doubt. Though often bruised, oft broken by the rod, Yet, like the phoenix from each fiery bed, Higher the stricken spirit lifts its head, And higher till the beast become a god. 
Poem 5 Irish Nocturne Now the gray mist comes creeping up From the waste ocean's weedy strand And fills the valley as a cup If filled of evil drink in a wizard's hand And the trees fade out of sight Like dreary ghosts unhealthily Into the damp pale night Till you almost think that a clearer eye could see Some shape come up of a demon seeking a part His meat as Grendel sought in heart The thanes that sat by the wintry log Grendel or the shadowy mass A Balor or the man with the face of clay The gray, gray walker who used to pass Over the rock arch nightly to his prey But here at the dumb slow stream where the willows hang with never a wind to blow the mists apart. Bitter and bitter it is for thee, O oh my heart, looking upon this land where poets sang, thus with the dreary shroud, unwholesome over it spread, and knowing the fog in the cloud in her people's heart and head, even as it lies forever upon her coasts, making them dim and dreamy lest her sun should ever arise, and remember all their boasts. For I know that the colorless skies and the blurred horizons breed lonely desire and many words and brooding and never a deed. Poem 6 Spooks Last night I dreamed that I was come again unto the house where my beloved dwells after long years of wandering and pain. And I stood out beneath the drenching rain, And all the street was bare and black with night, But in my true love's house was warmth and light. Yet I could not draw near nor enter in, And long I wondered if some secret sin, Or old unhappy anger held me fast. Till suddenly it came into my head, That I was killed long since and lying dead, only a homeless wraith that way had passed. So thus I found my true love's house again, And stood unseen amid the winter night, And the lamp burned within a rosy light, And the wet street was shining in the rain. Poem 7 Apology If men should ask, Despina, why I tell, of nothing glad nor noble in my verse, To lighten hearts beneath this present curse, And build a heaven of dreams in real hell. Go you to them and speak among them thus. There was no greater grief than to recall, Down in the rotting grave where the lithe worms crawl, Green fields above that smiled so sweet to us. Is it good to tell old tales of Troynovant? Or praises of dead heroes tried and sage, Or sing the queens of unforgotten age, Brynhild and Mev and Virgin Bradamont? How should I sing of them? Can it be good To think of glory now when all is done, And all our labor underneath the sun Has brought us this, and not the thing we would? All these were rosy visions of the night, The loveliness and wisdom feigned of old, but now we wake, the east is pale and cold, No hope is in the dawn, and no delight. Poem 8 Ode for New Year's Day Woe unto you, ye sons of pain, That are this day in earth! Now cry for all your torment, Now curse your hour of birth, and the fathers who begat you to a portion nothing worth. And thou, my own beloved, for as brave as e'er thou art, Bow down thine head, Despina, clasp thy pale arms over it, Lie low with fast-closed eyelids, clenched teeth, enduring heart, For sorrow on sorrow is coming, wherein all flesh has part. The sky above is sickening, the clouds of God's hate cover it. Body and soul shall suffer beyond all word or thought, Till the pain and noisy terror that these first years have wrought 
seen but the soft arising and prelude of the storm, that fiercer still and heavier with sharper lightnings fraught shall pour red wrath upon us over a world deform. Thrice happy, O Despina, were the men who were alive, in the great age and the golden age, when still the cycle ran, on upward curve and easily, for them both maid and man, and beast and tree and spirit in the green earth could thrive. But now one age is ending, and God calls home the stars, and looses the wheel of the ages, and sends it spinning back, amid the death of nations, and points a downward track, and madness has come over us, and great and little wars. He has not left one valley, one isle of fresh and green, where old friends could foregather amid the howling wreck. It's vainly we are praying, we cannot, cannot check, the power who slays and puts aside the beauty that has been. It's truth, they tell Despina, none hears the heart's complaining, for nature will not pity, nor the red god lend an ear. Yet I too have been mad in the hour of bitter paining, and lifted up my voice to God, thinking that he could hear, the curse wherewith I cursed him, because the good was dead. But lo, I am grown wiser, knowing that our own hearts have made a phantom called the good, while a few years have sped, over a little planet. And what should the great Lord know of it, who tosses the dust of chaos, and gives the suns their parts? Hither and thither he moves them, for an hour we see the show of it, only a little hour, and the life of the race is done. And here he builds a nebula, and there he slays a sun, and works his own fierce pleasure, all things he shall fulfill. And, oh, my poor Despina, do you think he ever hears the wail of hearts he has broken, the sound of human ill? He cares not for our virtues, our little hopes and fears. And how could it all go on, love, if he knew of laughter and tears? Ah, sweet, if a man could cheat him, if you could flee away, into some other country beyond the rosy west, to hide in the deep forests and be forever at rest from the rankling hate of God and the outworn world's decay. Poem 9 Night After the fret and failure of this day and weariness of thought, O Mother Night, come with soft kiss to soothe our care away and all our little tumults set to right. Most pitiful of all death's kindred fair, Riding above us through the curtained air, On thy dusk car thou scatterest to the earth Sweet dreams and drowsy charms of tender might, And lovers' dear delight before tomorrow's birth. Thus art thou wont thy quiet lands to leave, And pillared courts beyond the Milky Way, Wherein thou tarriest all our solar day, while unsubstantial dreams before thee weave, A foamy dance, and fluttering fancies play, About thy palace and the silver ray, Of some far moony globe. But when the hour, the long expected comes, The ivory gates open on noiseless hinge before thy bower, Unbidden, and the jeweled chariot waits, With magic steeds. Thou from the fronting rim, Bending to urge them whilst thy sea-dark hair Falls in ambrosial ripples o'er each limb, With beautiful pale arms, untrammeled, bare, For horsemanship to those twin chargers fleet Dost give full rein across the fires that glow In the wide floor of heaven from off their feet, Scattering the powdery star-dust as they go. Come swiftly down the sky, O lady night, Fall through the shadow country, O oh, most kind. Shake out thy strands of gentle dreams and light. For chains wherewith thou still art used to bind, With tenderest love of careful leech's art, The bruised and weary heart in slumber blind. 
Poem 10 To Sleep I will find out a place for thee, O sleep, A hidden wood among the hilltops green, Full of soft streams and little winds that creep, The murmuring boughs between. A hollow cup above the ocean placed, Where nothing rough nor loud nor harsh shall be, But woodland light and shadow interlaced, And summer sky and sea. There in the fragrant twilight I will raise A secret altar of the rich sea sod, Whereat to offer sacrifice and praise Unto my lonely God. Do sacrifice of his own drowsy flowers, The deadening poppies in an ocean shell, Round which through all forgotten days and hours The great seas wove their spell. So may he send me dreams of dear delight, And draughts of cool oblivion quenching pain, And sweet half-wakeful moments in the night To hear the falling rain. And when he meets me at the dusk of day, To call me home forever, this I ask, That he may lead me friendly on that way, And wear no frightful mask. Poem 11 In Prison I cried out for the pain of man, I cried out for my bitter wrath, Against the hopeless life that ran, Forever in a circling path, from death to death since all began. Till on a summer night I lost my way in the pale starlight And saw our planet far and small Through endless depths of nothing fall A lonely pinprick spark of light Upon the wide enfolding night With leagues on leagues of stars above it And powdered dust of stars below. Dead things that neither hate nor love it not even their own loveliness can know, Being but cosmic dust and dead. And if some tears be shed, Some evil god have power, Some crown of sorrow sit Upon a little world for a little hour, Who shall remember? Who shall care for it? Poem 12 De Profundis Come let us curse our master ere we die, For all our hopes in endless ruin lie. The good is dead, let us curse God most high. Four thousand years of toil and hope and thought, Wherein man labored upward and still wrought, New worlds and better, thou hast made as not. We built us joyful cities strong and fair, Knowledge we sought and gathered wisdom rare, And all this time you laughed upon our care. And suddenly the earth grew black with wrong, Our hope was crushed and silenced was our song, The heaven grew loud with weeping, Thou art strong. Come then and curse the Lord over the earth, Gross darkness falls and evil was our birth, And our few happy days of little worth. Even if it be not all a dream in vain, The ancient hope that still will rise again, Of a just God that cares for earthly pain. Yet far away beyond our laboring night, He wanders in the depths of endless light, Singing alone his musics of delight. Only the far-spent echo of his song, Our dungeons and deep cells can smite along, And thou art nearer, Thou art very strong. O oh, universal strength, I know it well, It is but froth of folly to rebel, For thou art Lord and hast the keys of hell. Yet I will not bow down to thee nor love thee, For looking in my own heart I can prove thee, And know this frail bruised being is above thee. Our love, our hope, our thirsting for the right, our mercy and long seeking of the light, Shall we change these for thy relentless might? Laugh then and slay, shatter all things of worth, Heap torment still on torment for thy mirth, Thou art not Lord while there are men on earth. 
Poem 13 Satan Speaks I am the Lord your God, even he that made Material things and all these signs arrayed Above you and have set beneath the race Of mankind who forget their father's face And even while they drink my light of day Dream of some other gods and disobey My warnings and despise my holy laws even though their sin shall slay them, for which cause, dreams dreamed in vain, a never-filled desire, and in close flesh a spiritual fire, a thirst for good their kind shall not attain, a backward cleaving to the beast again, a loathing for the life that I have given, a haunted twisted soul forever riven, between their will and mine, such a lot I give, white still in my despite the vermin live they hate my world then let that other god come from the outer spaces glory shod and from this castle i have built on night steal forth my own thoughts children into light if such an one there be but far away he walks the airy fields of endless day and my rebellious sons have called him long and vainly called my order still is strong, and like to me, nor second none I know, whither the mammoth went, this creature too shall go. Poem 14 The Witch Trapped amid the woods with guile, they've led her bound in fetters vile, to death, a deadlier sorceress, than any born for earth's distress, since first the winner of the fleece bore home the Chalcian witch to Greece. Seven months with snare and gin, they've sought the maid or wise within the forest labyrinthine shade. The lonely woodman, half afraid, far off her ragged form has seen, sauntering down the alleys green, or crouched in godless prayer alone at eve before a druid stone but now the bitter chase is won the quarry's caught her magic's done the bishops brought her strongest spell to knot with candle book and bell with holy water splashed upon her she goes to burning and dishonor too deeply damned to feel her shame for though beneath her hair of flame her thoughtful head be lowly bowed it droops for meditation proud, impenitent, and pondering yet, things no memory can forget, starry wonders she has seen, brooding in the wildwood green, with holiness. For who can say, in what strange crew she loved to play, what demons or what gods of old, deep mysteries under her have told, at dead of night in worship bent, at ruined shrines magnificent, or how the quivering will she sent, Alone into the great alone, Where all is loved and all is known, Who now lifts up her maiden eyes, And looks around with soft surprise, Upon the noisy crowded square, The city oafs that nod and stare, The bishop's court that gathers there, The faggots and the blackened stake, Where sinners die for justice' sake, now she is set upon the pile, the mob grows still a little while, till lo, before the eager folk, up curls a thin blue line of smoke. Alas, the full-fed burghers cry, that evil loveliness must die. Poem 15 Dungeon Grates so piteously the lonely soul of man Shudders before this universal plan, So grievous is the burden and the pain, So heavy weighs the long material chain, From cause to cause, too merciless for hate, The nightmare march of unrelenting fate. I think that he must die thereof, unless, Ever and again across the dreariness, there came a sudden glimpse of spirit faces, A fragrant breath to tell of flowery places, And wider oceans breaking on the shore, From which the hearts of men are always sore. 
It lies beyond endeavor. Neither prayer, nor fasting, nor much wisdom winneth there, seeing how many prophets and wise men have sought for it and still returned again, with hope undone. But only the strange power of unsought beauty in some casual hour can build a bridge of light or sound or form to lead you out of all this strife and storm. When of some beauty we are grown apart, till from its very glory's midmost heart out leaps a sudden beam of larger light into our souls. All things are seen aright, amid the blinding pillar of its gold, seven times more true than what for truth we hold in vulgar hours. The miracle is done, and for one little moment we are one with the eternal stream of loveliness that flows so calm aloft from all distress yet leaps and lives around us as a fire, making us faint with overstrong desire to sport and swim forever in its deep, only a moment. Oh, but we shall keep our vision still. One moment was enough, we know we are not made of mortal stuff, and we can bear all trials that come after, the hate of men and the fool's loud bestial laughter, and nature's rule and cruelties unclean, for we have seen the glory we have seen. Poem 16 The Philosopher Who shall be our prophet then, chosen from all the sons of men, to lead his fellows on the way of hidden knowledge, delving deep to nameless mysteries that keep their secret from the solar day, or who shall pierce with surer eye this shifting veil of bittersweet and find the real things that lie beyond this turmoil which we greet with such a wasted wealth of tears? Who shall cross over for us the bridge of fears and pass into the country where the ancient mothers dwell? Is it an elder, bent and hoar, who where the waste Atlantic swell on lonely beaches makes its roar in his solitary tower through the long night hour by hour pours on old books with watery eye when all his youth has passed him by and folly is schooled and love is dead and frozen fancy laid abed while in his veins the gradual blood slackens to a marish flood for he rejoiceth not in the ocean's might, neither the sun giveth delight, nor the moon by night shall call his feet to wander in the haunted forest lawn. He shall no more rise suddenly in the dawn, when mists are white and the dew lies pearly, cold and cold on every meadow, to take his joy of the season early, the opening flower and the westward shadow and scarcely can he dream of laughter and love, they lie so many leaden years behind. Such eyes are dim and blind, and the sad aching head that nods above his monstrous books can never know the secret we would find. But let our seer be young and kind, and fresh and beautiful of show, and take in ear the lusty head, and rapture of his youth be dead, Ere the gnawing peasant reason School him over deep in treason To the ancient high estate Of his fancy's principate That he may live a perfect whole A mask of the eternal soul And cross at last the shadowy bar To where the ever-living are. Poem 17 The Ocean Strand O oh, leave the laboring roadways of the town, The shifting faces and the changeful hue, Of markets and broad echoing streets that drown, The heart's own silent music, Though they too sing in their proper rhythm And still delight the friendly ear That loves warm humankind, Yet it is good to leave them all behind, Now when from lily dawn to purple night Summer is queen. Summer is queen in all the happy land, 
far, far away among the valleys green, let us go forth and wander hand in hand, beyond those solemn hills that we have seen, so often welcome home the falling sun, into their cloudy peaks when day was done, beyond them till we find the ocean strand, and hear the great waves run, with the waste song whose melodies I'd follow, and weary not for many a summer day, born of the vaulted breakers arching hollow, before they flash and scatter into spray. On, if we should be weary of their play, then I would lead you further into land, where with their ragged walls the stately rocks, shunt in smooth courts and paved with quiet sand, to silence dedicate. The sea-god's flocks have rested here, and mortal eyes have seen, by great adventure at the dead of noon, a lonely Nereid drowsing half a swoon, buried beneath her dark and dripping locks. Poem 18 Noon Noon, and in the garden bower, the hot air quivers o'er the grass, the little lake is smooth as glass, and still so heavily the hour drags that scarce the proudest flower pressed upon its burning bed has strength to lift a languid head rose and fainting violet by the water's margin set swoon and sink as they were dead though their weary leaves be fed with the foam drops of the pool where it trembles dark and cool wrinkled by the fountain spraying o'er it and the honey-bee hums his drowsy melody and wanders in his course a straying through the sweet and tangled glade with his golden mead o'erladen where beneath the pleasant shade of the darkling boughs a maiden milky limb and fiery tress all at sweetest random laid slumbers drunken with the excess of the noontide's loveliness Poem 19 Milton Read Again In Surrey Three golden months while summer on us stole I have read your joyful tale another time Breathing more freely in that larger clime And learning wiselier to deserve the whole Your spirit, master, has been close at hand And guided me, still pointing treasures rare Thick sown where I before saw nothing fair, And finding waters in the barren land. Barren once thought because my eyes were dim, Like one I am grown to whom the common field, And often wandered copes one morning yield, New pleasure suddenly, for over him Falls the weird spirit of unexplained delight, New mystery in every shady place, In every whispering tree a nameless grace, New rapture on the windy seaward height. So may she come to me, teaching me well, To savor all these sweets that lie to hand, In wood and lane about this pleasant land, Though it be not the land where I would dwell. Poem 20 Sonnet The stars come out, the fragrant shadows fall, about a dreaming garden still and sweet. I hear the unseen bats above me bleat, Among the ghostly moths their hunting call, And twinkling glow-worms all about me crawl. Now for a chamber dim, a pillow meet, For slumbers deep as death, a faultless sheet, Cool, white, and smooth. So may I reach the hall, with poppies strewn where sleep that is so dear, With magic sponge can wipe away an hour, Or twelve, and make them not. Why not a year? Why could a man not loiter in that bower Until a thousand painless cycles wore? And then, what if it held him evermore? Poem 21 The Autumn Morning See, the pale autumn dawn is faint upon the lawn that lies in powdered white of hoar-frost dight. And now from tree to tree 
the ghostly mist we see hung like a silver pall to hallow all. It wreathes the burdened air so strangely everywhere that I could almost fear this silence drear, where no one songbird sings and dream that wizard things, mighty for hate or love, were close above. White is the fog and fair, drifting through the middle air in magic dances dread over my head. Yet these should know me too, lover and bondman true, one that has honored well the mystic spell of earth's most solemn hours, wherein the ancient powers of dryad, elf, or fawn, or leprechaun oft have their faces shown to me that walked alone, seashore or haunted fen or mountain glen. Wherefore I will not fear to walk the woodland sere into this autumn day, far, far away. End of Part 1 The Prison House